Greetings. In this uh, tutorial, we'll be looking at how an ultrasonic sensor works. We'll be using an Arduino Uno, the HCSR04 sensor, and an oscilloscope. So here's my setup right there. But back to here to set up. The um, HCSR04 has four different pins. So if I look down carefully there, there's a uh, ground, an echo, trigger, and a five volts. So you have to be careful that you plug this in correctly. Um, go on to the next slide. You can see that I'm going to want to cha connect channel B to the echo and channel A to the trigger. So if you read through the document, and I hope you did, not go back to it, talks about how, how the uh, sensor works. It generates a 10 microsecond pulse. And then it measures the time for the echo to return. And that time is put into the width of a square wave. So we're going to look at that. So there will be two pulses that we're looking at. The trigger pulse, which is 10 microseconds in width. And then the echo pulse, which is going to be the time it took the um, sound wave to go from the sensor to the object and back. So if you look at you know next page, it kind of talks about how it calculates the distance and so forth using the speed of sound. All right, now for my setup here on my board. My uh, five volts connected here. I've got the ground on the opposite side, right there. Um, here's my, um, my echo pin connected to 12, and my trigger is here connected to 13. So, and I'm gonna use channel A here in yellow is going to be measuring off the um, the trigger, which is going to be that consistent 10 microsecond pulse. And channel B is going to be measuring that um, echo pin. So the settings that you want to use on the oscilloscope, the next page, um, kind of did some changes around here. Two volts division was going to be better. If I use the 100, I'll be able to see the trigger pulse better. But if I want to see both pulses, I want to keep it at about 500 uh, microseconds. I want to be sure that I'm triggering. Edge up and around 1 volt. The, va the value doesn't matter as long as it's above the signal. And we'll take a look at that. So here's my uh, oscilloscope setup. Um, I can see my trigger pulse. And there's my echo pin. And that width is going to be um, the time. Now, to get a better view of it, you may not be able to see some of the lines. In the display, be sure that this intensity is way up, because otherwise you may not be able to see it if it's saving energy. So to get to see the whole square wave, I went over here to display, make sure your intensity is just cranking up. That way you can see it, bam, it just, it just really shows up. Um, so I've got 500 microseconds for my time and two volts a piece. So here's my, my, my uh, trigger and there's my echo. Um, now to measure the time, there's a couple different ways of doing it. Over on the side menu, you should be able to find width. Uh, I guess I can kind of look at this, 500 microseconds. Uh, I'm gonna move it over a little bit. I'm gonna use this button so I can put it like at the beginning. So it looks like it's more than one division, a little bit more. One division is 500. So I'm going to guess about 550 or so um, just by looking at it. I didn't pay attention. By hitting that button, I got my width here. Looks like it's about uh, 610. I can also go back to my Arduino because you probably should have this, the Arduino program set up. It tells you a couple things in the top about what to do. Uh, and turn on the serial monitor so I can kind of look at it. So there's my width, 600 and so microseconds. And well, I wonder what I do with my finger. And uh, 10 centimeters. Uh, and if I look at my setup here, and that's about where it's at. About 10 centimeters away from my setup. And there's my width. Now if I move this closer, you'll notice that the square wave gets smaller and smaller because the time's getting shorter. If I move further away, it gets bigger. I'm gonna move this back to 10. Uh, I forgot to do this over here. So in my trigger menu, I've got this set to normal. Menu, channel one, sloping up. So here's the signal for channel one in yellow. 
Um, there's my trigger, just a little bit above. Looks like it's at one point. Actually, I do have one volt. I'm gonna lower my trigger value. And, oops, wrong button again. This one. Lower my trigger, and I might get to a point where it doesn't even work. It's kind of frozen on the screen. But you wanna make sure your trigger's up here. Um, and to take a closer look at this signal, I'm gonna change my time division. Let's go down to about, about 50. Let's keep, go one more, there it is. Um, darn these things. I'm gonna move the signal down. Wrong one. Channel one, down. There's, there's the width. So uh, we're looking at 20 microseconds per division. So that looks like it's about 10, 12. So there's the width of that. If I change it up to uh, 100, I can still kind of see it, but it's, you can see how thin it is. But then the other one's kind of off screen. So up to 500, have both of them on the same screen. I just know that there's a thickness to that. I just can't really see it that well. All right, now let's find the um, width of that square pulse um, using cursors. So I'm going to go ahead and move it over to the left so I can get a better look at the square wave. Looks like I'm having some issues with it being consistent, picking something up and picking something else. All right, there, moved my little target a little better. So it looks like it is still moving a little bit. Uh, I'm looking at my Arduino and it, it is changing. Looks like it's 555, 540, 555, 540. It's, been, it's going back and forth. That's pretty close. I mean, those numbers 540 microseconds a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my cursors. I do want these vertical ones and I wanna look. It doesn't matter what the source is, I guess. Put this right here. I guess I should change that to two because I'm really looking at channel two. Just in case the time is the same time on either one. So I got there and go to cursor B and try to get pretty close. That looks like about the ballpark. Somewhere, yeah, maybe there. Move back a little bit. All right, so I've got 2.230 um, milliseconds, 2.278 milliseconds. So I subtract these two numbers from each other. That looks like it's about 0.55 uh, milliseconds, which would correspond to about 550 or so uh, microseconds. So thumbs up on that. Um, um, so that's it. You know, follow the instructions that are in the rest of the PowerPoint on, on um, explaining how the distance is found. So I can use this example uh, and um, show the calculations. Take a quick video and revel in the fact that you now know how the distance is measured using radio waves. All right, that's it for today. Thanks. Have a good one.